thank you all very much for having me. Uh, way out of my league, all these speakers that I've heard tonight, very inspirational. Um, makes me feel like, what am I doing here talking? So, uh, hard to follow up with everybody. But today, I want to talk about the survival of Judaism in my family. Um, everybody has their own unique path, varying twists and turns, uh, a lot of amazing moments. Um, I just want to share my children's story with everybody. 1940s Morocco. There's a little girl named Suzanne. She comes down with typhoid. Her father's already succumbed to the disease. The hospital's done all, all they can for her. They send her home. And there's nothing left but her mother and her two grandmothers to pray over her. Somehow, she survives the disease. She's left with the scars across her back as a permanent reminder. But with her, Judaism survives. During the Korean War, there's a young airman named Charles. He's behind enemy lines when he's shot and captured. He survives the war as a POW. Although he's not Jewish, with his successful return to the US, Judaism will survive. Years later, that airman, he remains in the Air Force. He's later stationed in Rabat, Morocco. There, Charles meets Suzanne, the love of his life, the girl who survived typhoid. He agrees to an orthodox conversion to marry her. With that conversion and marriage, Judaism survives. In 1968, an Israeli submarine, the INS Dakar, is en route from England to Haifa, Israel. Tragically en route, she's lost in the Mediterranean. She goes down without nary any trace. No one knows what happened, but 69, soldiers go, excuse me, 69 sailors go down. Among them is Yosef Almog Suiza. His loss, he's lost, but his name will go on, and he will help Judaism survive. Late 1974, Suzanne goes into surgery to remove her gallbladder. When she wakes up after the surgery, the doctors tell her that she's pregnant. <laughs> the following year, Charles and Suzanne have their sixth child, a boy. To honor her younger brother, who was lost on the Dakar, they name him Joseph. In case you haven't figured it out, that's me. <laughs> I grew up with a lot of traditions that I didn't realize till much later in my life that there was much more significance and importance to them. My mom used to make these triangular shortbread cookies with apricot jam in the middle. Uh, she would make these uh, meals in the crock pot she called Skana. And she would make them on Fridays, you know, and it was much, much later that I realized it was hamantashen and that she was making a traditional Shabbat meal uh, in the crock pot, one that's uh, a lot, that's for the Ashkenazi, they refer to it as cholent. But with all those unnamed traditions, Judaism survives. During the summer of 1988, I end up in New York visiting relatives that were in from Israel. After visiting with the Rebbe in Crown Heights, uh, it's found out by some of the rabbis there that I'm 13 and have not yet been bar mitzvah. So that afternoon, I had an impromptu bar mitzvah, <laughs> a very memorable one. And with that, Judaism survives. I don't want to say that I grew up secular, but the opportunities to practice and, and lead a Jewish life were far and few between for me, for various reasons. But almost a decade later, after pondering my uncle and his name and, and my namesake, and it just dawned on me that I wanted to research my roots and religion more. So I went on this tear for about a year and, and read about as many books as I could get a hold of on Judaism. Later in life, through a random encounter between mutual friends, I met the love of my life, a Jewish girl from Long Island. Boy, was my mom happy. <laughs> We married. This whole path from my father and my mom to me leads to today. Today, I'm the father to two amazing boys. Two amazing boys who sing the dreidel song. Two amazing boys who make and eat hamantash. Two amazing boys that can sing the mozi. Two amazing boys that if you leave them to their own, they'll eat a whole hollow by themselves. <laughs> but today is the day that Judaism survives. That's it. <laughs>
Thank you.